Hi, my name is Avril Sorter and welcome to Conducting Cisco Unified Wireless Site Survey. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to verify that your wireless LAN that you've deployed has met your customer requirements. So in the perfect world, the installer would have taken your site survey and all the notes of your recommendations and they would have deployed your wireless access point exactly how you meant it to be and the coverage and the use of services are exactly as you had envisioned them. However, things happen. You know, it could be that the installer couldn't quite place the access point in the location where you specified or the antenna is slightly misaligned by by mistake by the installer. And so we need to go back and we need to check that the site survey and the final installation really did meet the customer requirements. And that's what this lesson is about. So in this lesson, we're going to start out talking about conducting an audit of the wireless LAN. And there's really two parts of that audit. There's the RF piece, making sure the physical layer is giving you the required coverage and meeting your capacity requirements. And then there's the piece that says, you know, can you roam between access points successfully? And we're going to first talk about the tools that you might want to use when conducting a post-site survey. And then I'm going to go through the steps of how you'd actually conduct a post-site survey. Once we've done that, I want to take a look at using the wireless control system, which is Cisco's tool for managing your wireless LAN network going forward. And that tool has some capabilities in it that can test to see if your wireless LAN is ready to support voice networks. You know, are there areas where voice is going to have a problem? And then similarly, there is a tool that will allow you to check the wireless LAN's readiness to support location services. Like, can you hear enough access points to be able to accurately predict where a device is? Once we've done that, we're going to wrap up with a demonstration. And I'm really excited about the demonstration because rather than giving you a long list of all the things that you need to include in your final report that you give to your customer, your final installation report, what we've done is we've created a checklist for you that you can use when you're doing your site surveys to check that you're including and telling your customer everything you need to as a final wrap up on your deployment. So now we want to talk about conducting a wireless LAN audit. And there's really two parts you want to think about in this section. The first is the coverage. Did I meet my expected coverage requirements? And the second part is the roaming. How am I transitioning between access points? And before we go through the step-by-step -step process of how to do a post-site survey, let's talk about the tools that you might want to use. Now, if you think about the goals of the post-site survey, is to verify the coverage, things like your cell overlap, what's the signal strength at the edge of the cell, and then also, can you actually support the services that the customer wants? Is the coverage good enough for data? Is it good enough for voice calls? And is it good enough for the location services? And so to do that, we're going to look at several of the things that we looked at in our pre-site survey. We're going to look at what's happening on the interference side, what's happening in our RF spectrum, what's happening on the wireless channel. Are we suffering multipath co-channel interference? Therefore, we can use similar tools that we used in our pre-site survey, things like the Cisco Spectrum Expert or the Air Magnet Survey. One of the critical differences is that the system has been deployed and therefore we now have an opportunity to actually look at live data. 
Now, some of the tools that you can use to help analyze live data include the Ear Magnet Analyzer, which does much more than just look at live data, of course. There's the OmniPeak tool and also the AirPCAP Wireshark. And I just want to step you through these tools on the next few slides. So the Ear Magnet Analyzer, at the heart of that has what they call an Airwise engine. And that's the one that's analyzing all of the data that's being collected. It collects information about the RF spectrum, the wireless channels, interference, the speed, the, the data rate that's being achieved. It also lets you drill down and look at specific devices and even look at the statistics related to voice conversations. Now this tool comes with two versions. It has the express version and then it also has the pro version. So the pro chart has some additional tools. These tools include, for instance, the ability to monitor voice delay and other statistics that are important when you're looking at issues when a voice call is taking place and the user is moving between access points. In addition to detecting the performance issues, it also has a capability to detect potential security breaches. Now, what I particularly like about this tool from a post-survey perspective is that it has an integrated reporter which has a library of built-in reports that you can choose from and it will give RS statistics, channel assessment, reports about what devices are on the network, as well as having a suite of compliance reports. And the ability to customize these reports means that you can give them to your customer as your post-site survey assessment. So the AirPCAP and the Wireshark are two tools that have come together. AirPCAP is used to capture the wireless LAN frames that are being transmitted over the air. And Wireshark then is used to display and analyze that data. So the advantage of using Wireshark is not only because it's a free tool, is because it's used by most IT professionals today. It's used to analyze the wired network and it supports just a phenomenal range of different protocols and file formats. And so most IT professionals are very familiar with Wireshark. AirPCAP then extends that tool to then allow you to analyze your wireless data frames. Now AirPCAP comes in different models. There are models for B and G, for A, B and G, and then there's a model for 802.11n as well as your legacy ABG radios. The AirPCAP model NX is the one that supports 802.11n and has a 2x2 MIMO capability as well. What I personally like about this tool is it's very easy to move between workstations. So if you're working on a tablet and then a laptop or then back to your desktop, it's very easy to transition between those different environments. And it has some nice features like it's able to capture traffic from three channels at the same time and aggregate it together. You can also capture packets from multiple channels and aggregate that together by using more than one AirPCAP adapter. So that's a kind of a cool feature too. And the last nice feature about this product is that it also has the ability to inject packets. So in addition to operating in a passive mode, if you can inject packets, that means you're not relying on testing the wireless LAN by looking at real user traffic, but you can actually create traffic onto the network as well. So the OmniPeak tool is a packet analyzer from a company called Wild Packets. And it's 
will analyze your wireless traffic. So as well as collecting it, it'll also analyze it. And it provides similar to the air magnet tool, it will provide you statistical information about your voice quality of service, roaming statistics. And like the EarPCAP tool, it also supports the ability to aggregate multiple channels together. So the OmniPeak, just like the EarPCAP, also supports the multi-channel aggregation. And that's particularly important when you're looking at problems that could exist when a user is roaming between two access points because you can literally monitor both access points and aggregate that data together. And so sometimes in situations where you see a user that's literally ping-ponging, sometimes referred to as flapping, between one access point and then joining the other and then going back again, and they physically may not be moving, you can really analyze that kind of data with this multi-channel aggregation. Notice here that the OmniPeak software also supports the EarPCAP wireless LAN adapter we talked about on the previous slide. But they also have their own network analyzer that supports not only the legacy equipment 802.11 AB and G, it also supports 802.11 N using a 3x3 MIMO. And this is the first wireless LAN adapter I've seen that actually goes to a 3x3 analysis. We have looked at three tools that are available in the market to do post-site survey analysis. We looked at the Air Magnet Analyzer, we looked at the EarPCAP in conjunction with Wireshark, and we've just finished up talking about OmniPeak. And there are other tools that are also available that you might want to use. Let's go on now to look at how you actually conduct a post-site survey. And on the next few slides, I'm going to take you through the different steps or stages that you'd want to follow while doing this post-site survey. So step one is the post-survey walkthrough. This is not that different to the very first walkthrough you did prior to the deployment. You want to collect all your blueprints, your site plans, your IT network maps. And now you want to walk through the building floor by floor, covering inside areas and outside areas. You should be verifying your proposal. Have the access points been placed where they should have been placed? What antennas have been used? What direction are those antennas pointing in? What is the height of the access point or the height of the antennas? In addition to verifying your access point placement is also an opportunity to go back and look at your RF interference. Now to do this, you use the Cisco Spectrum Expert tool or another spectrum analysis tool to help you identify the common sources of interference. And again, there are things like microwave ovens, Bluetooth devices, cordless phones, other wireless LANs that are operating nearby. In addition to looking at sources of interference, you also want to verify the coverage of the access point. And again, you should be looking at what did you plan and expect, and then what is happening in reality. You should be looking to make sure you have adequate signal level, so you'll be measuring the received signal strength, looking to see where the edge of the cell boundary is. At the same time, you should check the co-channel interference. I've seen people check for co-channel interference in different ways. Some people stand very close to the access point and then listen for other access points that are operating on the same channel. Other people, and my preferred approach, is to move to the edge of the cell boundary and listen for co-channel interference there. And again, I'm listening for other 